Yeah, morning. Please. morning. Please be seated. So, and you are Ishita Kishore, right? Yes, sir. So, what's your roll number? So, 5809986. Okay. So, introduce yourself. So, I am Ishita Kishore. Mm -hmm. I am a graduate in economics from Sri Ram College of Commerce, Delhi University. After which, I started working with Ernst & Young for two years in risk consulting. Okay. And thereafter, I started my preparation for the civil services exam. Okay. In general, sir, I feel across school and college, uh, sports has played a big role in my life. Okay. And it, I feel that it has really shaped my personality to a great extent. Good. So, what is your optional subject for UPSC? Sir, it's political science and IR. Okay, good. So, you have played football, basketball, mm, you also taekwondo, yes, sir. participated in some, okay. So you are the right person to ask, okay. So if you are posted as a uh, sports secretary, you are uh, not immediately like might be later or if you have an opportunity to meet sports secretary. So what sort of uh, immediate measures that could be brought in so that our performance in sports other than cricket and this badminton to some extent is coming up and kabaddi is also coming up slightly but largely other than cricket the other sports are being overlooked okay uh, they have not received the attention that they should have got okay even in the the reason fifa world cup or the the olympics Okay, we were not able to qualify in many categories and if we qualify also we are not able to be in the podium finish. Okay. Mm. So what sort of measures that could be taken so that uh, the other sports could also get benefited and we will be uh, bettering as a sporting nation? Yes sir, I do agree that apart from cricket, all the other sports also have to be promoted and in recent times we have seen uh, sports like badminton, tennis, India is performing well at the international level. But when it comes to other team sports like football, basketball, my suggestions to the sports secretary would be on two ends. Firstly, on the side of the players and the and the sport, we need to increase the infrastructure as far as Football is concerned, Europe and other Latin American countries have a very strong grassroots level presence in sports. Europe has active scouting networks for school children under 11, under 13 years old. So such sort of a model should be actively pursued across all states. It is there in Kerala and it is strongly present in Kerala for football but must be there evenly. So on the other side, to bring a behavioural change in society where viewership is also demanded for other sports. So this requires uh, us to promote these sports on uh, digital media so that people are willing to watch, they have a sense of attachment. The kind of coverage that FIFA had seen, the kind of coverage that cricket receives is not even across the other sports. So this kind of viewership will build a sort of relationship of the public with these sports and then this can take the thing forward. So I would suggest on two lines, grassroots and viewership, TV viewership. Okay. So I do accept that by improving the grassroots level scouting for the talents and then by improving the accessibility of the sports spectacles over multi multiple modes of communication will improve. Okay, but taking sports as a career, still there is some inhibition in the parents' mind. Okay, so we don't see sports as a career and usually uh, like the, the risk reward is at adverse when it comes to sports. If a person is uh, like pursuing a uh, what an education or something curricular related career then there is a there is a fallback options and all so do we as a country do we uh, are are we deficient in the plan b plan c when it comes to a sporting career so when a person is not able to achieve in an international arena uh, so it is either 
winners take all policy okay so the other people who is coming who is reaching up to national level state level okay whether they do have sufficient opportunity so that they have they have pursued that particular sport till a certain point in life so what is your opinion about this uh sir on the career front i feel that increasing the funding towards our sports infrastructure towards the kind of cash prizes that are received by the players will act as a strong incentive because uh, only recently i was reading about argentina and how young players see this as an opportunity to earn money and come out of their poverty for the entire family so they are very motivated so so funding is a very strong issue that can motivate people the cash prizes a continuous source of training their nutrition if these things are taken care of so broadly it brings us back to the infrastructure issues increasing our funds will encourage players uh and so secondly i feel that sporting in general not just as a career it is a very strong metric for developing someone's personality so even if people are not willing to pursue it beyond state level beyond national level i feel that there will not be a single national level player who will deny the role of sports in his or her life so not just as a profession but also at a personal level sports should be promoted okay good so recently this fifa 2022 world cup happened okay so where did the final match took place the stadium sir i don't know the name also. okay so they were they they started using this vr technology so are you aware about this technology sorry so vr okay um, sir augmented reality yeah augmented video augmented refereeing actually actually okay. video assisted refereeing okay the referees on field referees can use the video footages for refereeing so are you aware about the technology being as used yes sir i have read about this technology being used in terms of determining the decision making or so what are the uh, they are the vr is only for four circumstances four incidents the vr technology can be used are you aware about what are those four no sir i don't know exactly which so, four instances for goal Okay. for penalty kick like that so okay. whichever decision in the game football game has the potential to turn around okay, okay. change the the result of the game so only in four cases it could be used okay leave it leave it so you were delegate of indo china youth delegation by ministry of youth affairs Okay. So, so you are also student of economy. What is happening in China? Are we coming to end of this China's dominance in world economy? So, how do you see this? The, the current crisis they are facing. Uh, it was initially the COVID and. followed by a lockdown zero covid policy during that time also they are manufacturing all the the production started to decrease now also they are facing again a covid wave so so how should we see this so covid has been an inflection point in the global economy and china is not immune to this trend it has been witnessed across all major economies that some some sort of disruption is observed and this is prevalent right now in china as well because of the fresh covid wave and the rise in cases along with the public resentment for the strict lockdown measures so but in the larger picture and in the long term the world's second largest economy with over 4 trillion dollars 14 trillion dollars sorry so i don't think it will bring about a huge change in china's share in the global trade it is facing disruptions that cannot be denied and they need to be tackled very judiciously right now by china but sir in the long run i don't see it changing a lot of uh, economics uh, economically i don't see a huge shift in china's position okay how do you see this slump in china's economic performance 
for indian case should we see this as an opportunity or should we be bothered that some of our uh, products china is also a consumer so if china is getting affected again we will be affected and some supplies are coming from china say for example pharmaceutical industries the active pharmaceutical ingredients are imported from china majority of the yes. raw materials are from china okay should we see this we will be negatively affected or we should be uh, hopeful that we can get, there are some followers which could be beneficial to india sir of course this gives india an opportunity to make its place in the global supply chains and china is vacating a place in terms of the smaller manufacturing goods and it is moving up in the hierarchy so this position in general apart from the covid disruptions also must be utilized by india because it is quickly being captured by countries like bangladesh in textiles vietnam and footwear so india must push as fast as possible reforms that can improve its manufacturing sector and given the present disruption is is an opportunity for india though unfortunate for china it is an opportunity for india to make its place in the global supply chains so are we into recession uh, like global recession us recession india recession so where and all recession is present where recession is yet to occur or we are not into recession sir a recession is a uh, negative growth rate for two consecutive quarters yeah. and uh, india is not currently under recession india has an average growth rate of about 6% in the last one or two quarters globally sir yes the global gdp and the global gro- uh, rate of growth of the gdp has been in decline for two consecutive quarters same is the case for united states of america as well okay so coming to this non performing assets okay npa concerns when it uh, coming to the banking sector so so around 2017 somewhere like we were too much concerned about the increasing npas in the banking sector how is the situation now so what were the measures taken whether we are we have bettered from that point of time so a number of measures have been taken uh, with regard to the banking sector's npa problem for example the basel 2 norms was strictly followed and india has a higher capital adequacy ratio of 9% even though the basel 2 recommends 8% so such measures have been taken and presently we have seen positive results as well the npas for the public sector banks recently have shown a positive result they are down to 5 to 6% from 12% in 2017 so so stringent measures and having due diligence and proper regulation in the banking sector can go a long way in ensuring that the money spent and the money kept is is following proper procedures in the banking sector the recent set of rate hikes so we are increasing the interest rate in the economy so okay won't it affect adversely the uh, the investment climate in the country and in due course of time the gdp may also be affected so we are focusing on inflation targeting but as a result the rate hikes are going to affect the the production and the investment climate in the country so what is your opinion and how we should go ahead so the rate hikes have been an imperative measure because inflation is one of the foremost measures in maintaining macroeconomic stability in any country so tackling inflation was a huge challenge especially since there were so many supply chain bottlenecks across the world whether with respect to oil or other semiconductor chips so this fueled inflation very fast and it was important to tackle it rbi has taken a a measured and balanced approach in terms of slowly hiking its rate and tackling inflation but also being mindful of the other growth indicators for example the investment climate the uh, the growth of the gdp so we also have to see these measures in comparison to what is happening in other countries because if investment is coming out of india these investors are going to countries which are offering higher rates of interest for example the united states of america so in comparison while a lot of fpis 
uh, have exited the market, but still India has maintained a balanced economical clim economic climate despite the global disruptions. Okay. This rising uh, the rates, interest rates, is a supply side measure or a demand side measure to tackle inflation? Inflation could be a demand side and supply side. Supply uh, dearth also can cause inflation yes, and de demand is high also then inflation may happen. So by increasing the rates what we are trying to achieve? Which side we are trying to focus? So this is the supply push inflation because... No, I am asking we are trying to reduce the inflation. We are addressing the problem on which side? Supply side or demand side? Sir, I think we are addressing the supply side issues. Are you sure? So I'll take a moment. Yeah. Sir, I think that the pent-up demand has been there and we need demand to fuel the overall economy because we are a consumption-based economy. So, inflation is not discouraging, uh, uh, sorry, the rate hikes are not discouraging that. The rate hikes are uh, to check the rise in prices because of imported inflation in the supply chain. Actually, uh, so when the rates are increased, what will happen in the economy? The money supply will be increased or decreased? Sir, it will be decreased. Decreased. Money will be decreased. Yes. The demand is with the money only. Yes. So the demand will be reduced. Okay. Supply chain means by production, by okay. increasing the production. So usually fiscal, fiscal measures will be addressing the supply side. Okay, okay. Monetary the monetary yes. policy will be addressing the demand side. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Then coming to an international affairs, so, so far there had been 15 resolutions in international various international fora against Russia due to this Russian aggression over Ukraine. So in all such 15 resolutions, India has abstained from voting. How do you see the stance of India in abstaining from voting? Sir, India has showcased to the world its strategic autonomy in its decision making on these resolutions. While Russia has been a long-standing and all-weather partner and friend across all the decades, India has categorically said at various forums, including the recent visit by Prime Minister to Samarkand, where he said that this is not the era for war. And we have said that cessation of violence must happen both parties should come back to the deliberation table and have dialogue with each other and resolve their issues without any violence. So while condemning all the violence, India has maintained its ties in the international relations through diplomacy and deft handling of the issue. So, sir, I feel that this has, been, this has enhanced India's uh, strategic decisions globally. Okay. So when it comes to general elections in the country, so we ask people not to abstain from voting. So come out and vote. Election Commission is conducting sweep yes. related activities, all those things. So, but India is a country, an aspiring superpower. Okay, so we are aspiring for a UN Security Council permanent membership. So in a crucial uh, issue, so we are abstaining from voting. So won't this be seen as an indecisiveness on the part of India by the world community and they will be judging us as a weak country. So we are not able to take a stand. If you feel Russia is your time-tested friend, vote for Russia. So if you feel the Ukraine cause, the aggression by one power over another is wrong, then vote for the resolution or favor of Ukraine. So abstaining, won't it be seen as an indecision from the country and it would be seen as a weakness? Sir, in my opinion, it is not weakness. And India, while critics of other countries have often called India a fence-sitter, which is indecisive and not making its stand clear. So, but by merely voting in favour or against Ukraine, even Europe has voted against 
Russia, but Europe's entire supply chain and its dependence on of oil on Russia is still very high. So while India is not taking these global stances on case by case basis of these resolutions, India is definitely uh, spreading its larger message of cessation of violence. India has engaged diplomatically with both Ukraine and Russia and just because it has abstained on a particular resolution does not mean it is a fence sitter because in international relations these issues are complex, they cannot be seen in isolation and they cannot be seen in silos from one another, economic interdependence, security dependence and cessation of violence have to, see in a, have to be seen in a combined view to enhance India's national interest at the global stage. Yes, India also can do the same when it comes to a resolution, it is a way of registering your uh, observation or remarks okay, in a more forceful manner. Okay, so it doesn't, so voting for a resolution or against a resolution is not going to preclude a country from importing or exporting anything from another country. Okay, so that trade relationship is a different one and voting in a resolution is a different thing. Uh, so that's what I was trying to mention. Okay, then moving on to the next question. So there was a report. The report says in organ transplantation, they have analyzed a set of organ transplantation which has happened in the past. Women are more often donors than a receivers when it comes to organ transplantation. So how do you see this aspect, this fact that the women are more often donors compared to receivers? Sir, though I have not read the report, mm. but if I have to interpret it, in my opinion, I feel women carry a strong sense of emotional quotient and they have a strong sense of empathy towards their responsibilities, whether in the personal sphere or in the professional sphere. And they don't back down from challenges. Uh, sir, in my personal experience also, the women around me have always risen up to the challenges and I know a donor in my family also. Okay. So it does uh, coincide with that and I feel it is that uh, empathetic and emotional side of a woman who is always willing to go out and do whatever the best she can. So, so perhaps uh, that can be something that is... Uh, the Any other dimension which you can visualize? Sir, on the negative side, sometimes I can think that there might be uh, societal pressure on a woman to live up to these standards, to live up to these uh, affirmations that women are supposed to be helping out, they are supposed to be empathetic. So this can create an external pressure uh, for a woman, especially for her husband or her son or a fam male family member owing to the patriarchal society. This sort of external pressure can also be a reason. Could it be because women are more healthier for the corresponding age? So women remains donor and uh, the male part is receivers. Uh, 